Hello and welcome back to Data Science CastNet. In this video I thought we'd round out the um, Kaggle LLM exam series just by looking at one final technique that I think could be particularly useful if you're trying to boost your scores. Um, and that is the idea of retrieval. Um, so if you look in the discussions you'll see various ones around this idea. This is a nice one to start on. Open book LLM science exam. And the idea here is that since the questions themselves were generated from the Wikipedia pages from you know random science Wikipedia pages uh, why don't we just upload all of Wikipedia or at least a science subset of Wikipedia onto Kaggle so that at inference time when we're making our predictions we can fetch some relevant context which might be helpful and that it might contain the answer that the question is looking for um, and so hopefully if we provide that context the model is able to do a better job at, um, at answering that so this is one post that has some some links I think others have done um, some demos as well. Um, so what I'm going to do is just run through this notebook I just made um, just to kind of illustrate the idea and then you can take this and extend it and apply it hopefully to the competition. So um, the only library that's needed apart from the base ones that are there is um, face CPU. Um, there's offline versions if you need to run this at, at inference and if you're on a GPU machine I highly recommend the GPU version just because it's a lot faster. Um, okay so the idea here is that we're going to load in some data and for this example, I've taken this wiki uh, en sci. So this was created by one of the competition participants. This is like a science-related subset of Wikipedia, 130 articles on sciencey topics um, that they created just by making a small like science or not classifier. And so if you look at some of the text here, this has a text column, a URL, and a title. Um, this is just like concatenated text from the article. Um, and you can see there's some useful things. There's also you know the references section and so on that has a bit of noise. Um, so the first thing I did was to write a sort of dummy little clean function that just splits it at references or anything that see also external links, all of the cruft that might be at the end of an article, um, just getting rid of that. Now I will say this is not by any means a comprehensive way to clean Wikipedia data. You'll find there's many other issues if you start diving into it, um, but I'm not going to look into that. This is The point is we're just creating some nice clean text. Um, so here, picking a random item from the data set, we have a botanical name, we have some information on it. Um, that's kind of an example of the kinds of chunks of text that we'll be looking at. Okay, and so then just for this notebook, I'm only looking at the first 100 articles. You would get rid of that if you were gonna actually use this, um, but bear in mind if you're taking some amount of time to like work with or embed each um, example, if you have all of Wikipedia, that's you know millions of articles, uh, you could be waiting a while. So for, for speed of demo, um, we're just picking the first 100 articles. Okay, um, so how do we create embeddings? What's the point here? Well, the idea is that we take a model that has been tuned to create useful embeddings, and there's a whole lot you can look at the um, embedding model leader board. I forget what I think it's MTEB. Yeah, here we go. If you want to see um, some of the latest, greatest models and how they do on these different ranking and uh, classification data sets, there's a whole list of ideas here. Um, but for this one, I'll stick with the one that's usually used in the hugging face examples on retrieval, uh, a model from SentenceNet. Um, you can try them out. Um, okay, so the idea here is that we have a language model, um, but instead of being trained to produce the next token, we're instead just using it to create an embedding. And so we're going to feed our inputs through the model, um, encoding our input. We're feeding it through the model, and then we're taking the last hidden state of that model, um, and that's going to be our are embedding. And so, if, for example, if I take the first piece of text from this data set and I feed it through this get embeddings function, I have this 768 dimensional vector. And the idea here is that this captures some of the essence of this sequence, right? It's gone from a whole long sequence of tokens down to one single vector that is the embedding. This is something that tries to capture what this sentence, uh, what this piece of text is describing and what it means. So, we can do that to the whole data set. And then we have an embeddings column. And that's what we're going to use to find the nearest neighbors. Now, you can do this manually, but um, Hugging Face actually has, this is such a common use case, that it has this built-in functionality for doing retrieval, um, which adds a face index, just a, a nice, fast way of doing approximate nearest neighbor retrieval. Um, and so that's going to let us just make our lives easy if we want to go and search for relevant context. So um, to show how this works, I have a question. What is notching? which I know happens to be something addressed by one of the first few pages, which is why I chose it. Um, and so if we take this question and we get the embedding from the question, 
what we end up with is something that's the same dimensionality as the embeddings of one of the pieces of text, right? They're all mapped to the same space. And so now I can compare them and I can say, okay, this is a long vector of numbers. Um, which one is the most similar of all of the embeddings of the different articles? And if we call uh, get nearest neighbors, that's exactly what that's going to do. That's going to pull out the five nearest neighbors to this question. Um, and when we plot them out, we'll see that we have uh, five different articles, um, but only one of them has a really good score. Here, the score is lower, the better. In other framings, it's higher, the better. Um, and that is this article on notching. So we've successfully gotten the best match to be the article that in fact does seem to have a lot of information on what is notching. Notching is a metal cutting process, blah, 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 blah. Um, so that's all that's in this notebook. And the reason I wanted to highlight this is that, um, I mean, hopefully it's fairly obvious why this is useful. If you can take a language model that you're training, um, that, you know, you're training a big transformer to look at a question and an answer and say, is this the correct answer or to produce the correct answer given a set of choices. If you say, here's the question, here's the answer, is that right or not? or here's the question, here's five answers, which one's right? Um, that's one thing. But if you say, here's the Wikipedia article on, you know, nuclear dynamics. Okay, here's a question about nuclear dynamics. Here are four possible answers. That's a lot more useful because the model now has this context that hopefully contains the answer, especially because we know that Wikipedia is the ultimate source for all of these questions. And so it's very likely to have a useful document in there that's able to help contribute to answering those questions correctly. So that's the reason this is useful. You can see um, in the Kaggle competition, if you go into the discussions, there's lots of um, examples that people have done. Um, obviously, there's cleaner ways to do it than this. And there's also considerations like um, we probably don't want to pass this entire big wall of text. We just want to find maybe the most relevant sentence or two. Um, so you could look at splitting by paragraph or section. Um, maybe you want to pass in the title of the article as well, make sure that there's no garbled um, additional strings at the end. So there's a lot of like refinement you can do. Um, but yeah, that's the core, core idea of retrieval. Um, and the reason that this is cool is not just for this particular competition in Wikipedia, um, but more generally, if you have a language model that's trying to answer some specific question about your company or about a particular project or a topic, um, if you can go and fetch relevant information that actually contains the you know, ground truth relevant information, and then you can feed that to the model before it generates its output, you're much more likely to get accurate responses as opposed to the model just trying to generate this solely from its weights. Um, so this is a very useful technique in general as well. And pretty much everyone who's doing any sort of language model work, uh, if you talk to any of the companies, what they're looking for is not just fine tuning a model, um, but also augmenting it with things like retrieval and tool use so that it can actually be more accurate and useful in the real world. I hope you found that useful. This will be the end of the Kaggle series for now. I may do some follow-ups later, uh, but I hope that's given you a good start in the competition. And yeah, do check out the discussions to see how people are using these ideas. And if you find anything else uh, that you think you'd like me to cover, do let me know. See you in the next one.